What's going on, everybody? Uh, it's your boy here to give you guys this review for uh, Mary's Medicine. Yes, yes, I know that I've been away for a while, but if you guys watch my, uh, you know, um, year review for 2016, you guys will know kind of the whole ups and downs and backs and forth. So, oh my gosh, my face is shiny as hell. Whatever. So before I actually get into this review, I just want to make mention of from last um, week, as I have been watching episodes and everything, but um, I will say that I was so here for Dr. Jackie sitting here and flipping the fuck out. We all know everybody has that breaking point, you know, hashtag Harry Hilson, and Dr. Jackie had hers, and it's, and I, like I said, I think we all know how it feels to do something that is meaningful to us. You bring people in, so you're opening yourself up, letting people into your your personal world, and then all of a sudden they, you know, go left, do some crazy shit, and then all of a sudden it's just like for real though. So it's like get the hell out. I, I was here for I, like I really wanted Jackie to go a little more left with it, but she didn't. But whatever. So we start this um this uh, episode out. I need to make sure I got this right. <laughs> What? Okay, so you, okay, I'm like, my notes are real, like, it's been a while since I wrote notes and everything, so you have uh, Lisa, not Lisa, uh, Dr. Jack and Dr. Simone talking, and, you know, Dr. Jack was upset because there was that one moment that Lisa Nicole said that she would uh, do the uh, photo shoot, and then now, okay, I'm not going to do the photo shoot, and Dr. T Dr. Simone pretty much did the whole, you know, we're going to pretend like this is a fork because we know this is not a fork. And I only have this here because I was actually making Long Island. So I might actually start drinking another Long Island while I'm on camera. Don't judge me. But she pretty much did the whole, you know, this right here is a pocket. So, you know, now Lisa Nicole is in her pocket. Well, all this other stuff, this shit is convenient. These two motherfuckers put on it. Like, they literally put on their motherfucking shady ass glasses. I was like, okay, I, I, hopefully everybody caught that. So then we move to uh, Toya and Eugene. They're talking about her 40th. And he's sitting here talking about some man. I've been where, 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 what they see me doing, where, 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 what? Like he was like, that's all I've been doing is work, 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 Rihanna. This hoe gonna sit here and say, and I'm talking about Toya, like, oh, well, you know, you talking about that Rihanna. I've been listening to that Beyonce Lemonade. And it's one of those which is like, that shit cute, that shit funny. But on the real though, like, you, again, I think I'm pretty sure I said this shit like for the last season. Eugene has enough shit on fucking camera to take her ass to court and not only get a divorce, but get full custody of the fucking kids and she got to pay his ass child support on the motherfucking real. You want that motherfucking limit? Come on, get the fuck out of here. Like, oh, some real shit. I am not a Beyonce stan. I do like Beyonce. I do like her music. I do like her fucking sound and everything. But it's like everybody's sitting here riding on Beyonce clip. And then for you to sit here and mention, well, I'm on that Beyonce lemonade. Okay. Eugene, wake the fuck up. But she wants to do a party for her 40th. And Eugene said something. And it's one of those ways it's like you, you got to catch what people say. He said, I do not have the money. I have been pretty much the whole... You ain't doing shit but sitting here drinking and spending up my motherfucking money. I have been working. She's talking about, so you ain't putting away no savings for my boy? He was like, the savings been going to Uncle Sam, baby. But she doesn't understand it. And she's like, this is my, and I understand the whole, I do understand the milestones. Because again, I turn 30 next week today. So next Friday, I turn 30. Had a big, had a whole lot of shit planned. That shit probably gonna fall through. So my 30th is probably not gonna be what I want it to be. But you know, again, hindsight being 2020, I will be in Germany next October. Fingers crossed, everything all right. I'll be in Germany. So shit, when I turn 31, I can, you know, can I do my dirty 30 rebound? But again, I got a milestone and do what the fuck it is. But you have to ask yourself, are you is this milestone truly for you? Is the party for you, or is it for you to sit here and stunt on people? That is the question. She's all about stunts, so fuck her. So Lisa's meeting up with uh Jackie. Jackie is talking to her sister, and she's like, so, you know, you still feeling a kind of ways about the party, well, about the uh, photo shoot? She's like, yeah, but today it's not about that. <laughs> it's not about, you know, you know, Lisa and Jackie. It's about, you know, Lisa Nicole Cloud 
and Dr. Jackie. It's about her appointment. So Darren couldn't show up for whatever reason, you know, um, and the appointment was later in the day for him to be able to show up. She feels some kind of way. But again, I mean, here's the thing, you know, for those who, of us who work, we know how it is. Sometimes you just can't make it to shit. There have been days that I've worked anywhere from 12 to well past fucking 16 motherfucking hours and have to wake up to do it the fuck again. And I'm not even a fucking doctor. So he went there, it is what it is. But the good news is her her hormones are good. His swimmers are good. They just got to be able to come together. And, you know, she, um, Lisa has said, you know, the babies have uh, brought them together in the past. Dr. Jackie called that, so she's just like trying to ask her, are you doing this for the right reasons? And Lisa Nicole is saying that, no, 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 I'm doing this for the right reasons. So we'll see. Really quickly, if y'all see me like coughing or clearing my throat or whatever, it's not because I'm sick. It's actually because uh, some stuff went down the wrong fucking pipe and everything. So all that good jazz and I was talking about Long Island. Well, you know what, damn it, I, I, got, I got a fucking Long Island. It's what it is. And also, you know, I, I made me some, you know, deep fried chicken skin for y'all at the pork rinds. Y'all had a pork rind. Got me some chicken skin. Every now and again, I can indulge. So this is me indulging. Don't judge me. <clears throat> but uh, kind of picking up where we left off. Let me see. So we have uh, Darren and um, Lisa Nicole. So they're talking. And <clears throat> he pretty much says to her, the reason I wasn't there is because I didn't want to be there. Uh, his whole thing is he is a doctor. So kind of doing doctoring things around another doctor. I somewhat get what he's saying. It's almost one of those which is like, you are a doctor, so to have another doctor telling you something about you, despite the fact you are in two totally separate fields of <clears throat> being a doctor, it's like teachers where, you know, like um, my major in uh, college was uh, mathematics, secondary, I'm sorry, my uh, minor was secondary education, high school math teacher. <clears throat> so if I were to go to college, well, high school and teach, to have another teacher trying to talk to me about how I teach and their history on maps, one of those ways is like, yeah, I don't really want to hear it because, you know, even though we have that common ground of education, we're like two totally different fucking, you know, um, subjects or whatnot. So I kind of get what he meant, but he still should have been there. <clears throat> what I didn't like is that um, Lisa Nicole decided to lie to him and say that. <clears throat> His sperm count was below what it should have been because she liked to see him squirm and then she told the truth. He was, you know, he took it in a good way, but that's one of the things where it's just like, I do understand, yes, hurt people tend to hurt people. I've been there, but <clears throat> I haven't been in the marriage. Still fucking single, you know, 29 going on 30. But that's one of those where, you know, he could have went left with that shit, but he didn't. <clears throat> what else we got? <laughs> so Simone um is talking with Cecil and pretty much said like it's a possibility, but more or less they have uh, found his father. And I know I watched some um reviews <clears throat> and apparently it came out in the vlogs that um she did find her father and like I said he had passed away. Um and let's see. She said um <clears throat> that her last words to him was I love you and even if she had to say anything else those last words would still be the last uh, words <clears throat> so um Dr. Jaggy is in the suburbs so she um decided to meet her husband halfway so in the suburbs they're unpacking and I do believe this is all just for a um <clears throat> a scene and it's not to say that her husband doesn't work, but we know that as a doctor, she works more than what he does. So having all the girls there to help her unpack, it was truly nothing but a scene for uh, TV. <clears throat> Everything that trans that uh, transpired afterwards, I'm not saying this was chalked up for television, but you guys get what I'm saying, that if anybody should have been unpacking shit, it probably should have been him. No shade whatsoever. Well, Dr. Heavy, she comes in <clears throat> and she wants to talk about the photo shoot and everything and is doing her best to deflect. But here's the reality, as much as you want to deflect, and I will say that the uh, instigator of the entire thing was Mariah. <clears throat> she put a battery in uh, 
Lisa's back and Lisa went for it. But at the same exact time, just because the battery was put in her back, once a <clears throat> Dr. Heavy could have just sat back. It's like, you know what? <clears throat> this is going to another level. I'm going to just sit here and I'm going to let you be foolish and I'm going to just sit here and watch you be foolish. Trust me, I have done that. When <clears throat> trying to talk with somebody, especially when it comes to religion, and it's like, okay, we're talking, but once I see that they're baiting me just so they can sit here and argue, shut that shit down. It's just like, you want to continue to talk, and you can hear yourself talk, but this, we're done. It's what she probably should have done, but she didn't, and she was, you know, someone in her feelings, so, you know, Jack said, get the hell out. You know, I probably would have said worse. <clears throat> so we see a flashback of Toya telling Kwai that uh, she wanted uh, her to pretty much do... Um, her 40th uh, party, so Quad is asking the girls, hey, can y'all help out? Not just, uh, you know, physically, but monetarily. Out. And they somewhat decided to do that. And um, Quad, not Quad, Simone pulls Quad off to the side <clears throat> to talk to her about um, her issue, well, what the latest discovery with her father, which I don't think it was necessarily the proper time, but I, I guess it was just so much going on, full of emotion. Let me just get it out. She talked to her, and Quad took it hard. <clears throat> and I'm going to try to talk about this in my situation without going too, too heavy. But Quad took it heavy because her father's death, to my understanding, was um not expected. Dr. Jackie, because Dr. Jack came in a little bit afterwards, because they had talked, I think, um, maybe like in the living room or dining room, and then moved to a bathroom, and then that's when Dr. Jack came in. <clears throat> Dr. Jackie knew that her father was going to pass away. She just didn't know that it was going to happen as soon as it did. And Dr. Simone, her whole thing, she wanted closure. She feels that is what she has, but I think that she needed to talk to someone within her inner circle outside of her husband to kind of just, like, close the chapter on this book. And <clears throat> I know why um, Kwa took it as heavy as she did. Because um, it's not a secret. <laughs> like I said, my father passed away in May. Um, and um, it was one of those things where, <clears throat> for me, because even watching this, and I know that when I resume, because it's actually paused right now, when I resume that, it's probably going to get just a little bit heavier. I hope not, but um, I know that my father had had seizures. <clears throat> um, I had heard um, uh, my brother, one of my brothers tell me that um, my father, I guess, was having well, seizures or blacking out, whatever you want to call it. <clears throat> and there was one day that he was driving and had another episode and total his damn vehicle. <clears throat> so it was one of those things where it's like, you know, there were so many different things there. My father is fucking stubborn, bullheaded, as is my mother. So hence why I'm as stubborn as I am. But <clears throat> my father never wanted anyone to know what was wrong with him. So it was one of those where I kind of knew things were going on. I did not know when he would go. So when it happened, it had nothing to do with any of his uh, conditions. He's like, no, all of them. <clears throat> but um, you know, like I said, um, in one of the videos I did a uh, while back, um, he was uh eating, was walking uh to the bathroom, slipped, hit his head. There was blood, <clears throat> and it was a combination, culmination of uh the blow to the head and the fact that he had also choked on what it was that he was eating. And my father, my father passed away, and that shit was one of those where. Of course, that shit was tragic because no one saw it coming, of course. So, <clears throat> in watching that episode, well, watching that scene, or those two scenes kind of bind to one play out, that shit, that shook me. It did. And I'm sitting here like, oh, hold on, hold on, be strong. And even right now, trying to talk about it, trying to not go so deep to where I sit here. Because y'all already seen me cry about that shit, so we ain't going to no more. But that's pretty much where that scene pretty much ended off. Okay, so... Okay, that thing is still doing that right there. I'm sorry. <clears throat> Again, y'all know I have a whole workstation type thing worked out, so 
were between two different, you know, workstations, whatnot. Not the point. So, <clears throat> go ahead and wrap this up. So, uh, at Toya's prom, uh, let me see. I said, Hi, I said, I have a note that says Mariah Quad Prom. What did I say? Prom what? Prom point what? Why did I say? Oh, got it. Okay, so Mariah was throwing the utmost shade. So they have pictures of everybody's um prom pictures, which seems like a good idea. If I ever fucking did, oh my god, that shit would be so fucking crazy and shady, amongst other things. <clears throat> but you have a <laughs> said that she makes a good prom kick. I'm like, no. No, Mariah, stop it. And then, who else did she say? She said, Toya, so there's a picture of um of a car. I'm guessing it's maybe like a limousine or something like that. I don't fucking know. Y'all know I'm not a motorhead. But there's that. There's a big play. It was just like, oh, okay. <clears throat> well, see, there you go, Toya, uh, taking pictures of, you know, things that, you know, she likes, but she can't afford. I'm like, you know what? <laughs> And had this episode, like, had this portion just been nothing but just shady remarks, like, I would have been here for it, but as y'all can probably tell, I probably, I really wasn't here for it. So, okay. So you have Toya, so, um, Eugene is with the guys. <clears throat> They're talking one night. She walks over, I believe she's talking about her corsage and everything, and I think she made mention that, uh, one of their children had put it on throwing shade at Eugene because he showed up late. Well, the reason he showed again, this one of the things was just like, <clears throat> and I'm finna say some shit, and I know I'm finna say he makes people mad. I don't give a fuck. It's my damn platform. And if y'all disagree, again, we can, um, you know, respectfully, honestly, disagree in the comment section down below. It is what it is. If somebody decided to get disrespectful, just know that I'm, yeah, it is what it is. But anyway, <clears throat> She makes mention of the fact that he wasn't there, and he's kind of let her know. On some, and I, I'm a paraphrase. I'm gonna sit here and say what the fuck he wanted to say, but that he couldn't say. Because if y'all y'all do know, I get reckless at the mouth when I'm. I can't. I really can't get reckless. I done said some shit that we ain't going there. Anyway, <laughs> then I must be Eugene and kind of say what he wanted to say. <clears throat> The reason that I fucking showed up late is because I don't know how the fuck to tell you no. See, what happens in a lot of relationships is that there are some men, and it's one of those where, you know, it's one of those, you know, no matter how you look at it, a man will never be right. <clears throat> because a man can sit here and see this shit is wrong. This idea that she has, whether it be a fitness venture or whatever, is wrong. But they say happy wife, happy life. So I'm going to give her what she wants. Though I know that it is the wrong thing to do, and I know what the end result is going to be, but I'm going to give it to her. And when the shit blows up, which is where they are right the fuck now, rather than Toya or the wife or the woman, whomever taking responsibility that you know what, I did come up with this. All that you did was be supportive of me. It is all your fault because of whatever. So... The fact that she won't sit here and spend up all this motherfucking money, that's when he fucked up. He should have had her ass on the allowance. I know some people don't, probably don't agree with that. It is what the fuck it is. Should have had her ass on the allowance. If you want to sit here and spend money, get your ass a motherfucking job. You know what? We're on Married to Medicine. Use your Married to Medicine, med married to medicine paycheck to pay for your lap. I'm just saying, <clears throat> maybe this is why I'm almost 30 and still fucking single. Maybe. <clears throat> But, I mean, you have that, the whole, let's go from this house to a bigger house to sit here and stunt because they leased it. No, nah, baby, that's not a good idea. But, no, you're going to do because you want to say make her happy and all these other things. So, now, you're all the way over here fucked up because you sat here and done what she wanted to make her happy. But, rather than her owning up to the fact that, you know what, it is what it is, it's always going to be his fucking fault. So, the fact that he's a late because he's sitting here putting extra hours sitting here and pay for shit that a lot of it is what the fuck she ran the fuck up it ain't good enough and then she is is it demasculate or emasculate y'all let me know because i ain't got that fucking problem but she's doing that in front of the other fucking married men i was fucking done it is what it is so now you have uh toya up on stage <clears throat> mariah 
it was it was cute shade machine like it and then Carrie, this whole who just pops up from time to fucking time. Drew some shades talking about some year 40, which is closer to 50, this and the third. And Toya the whole thing is, oh my gosh, I'm getting older enough. And it's one of those where on some real shit. All of the women <clears throat> on this show, they are very beautiful. Toya does not look like she's 40, which is a compliment. So like even me, I'm turning 30 in a week. I've been told that the youngest that I look is 26, which is a fucking compliment <clears throat> to me. And even they said, you look 30. Fuck it, I look 30. If somebody says, hey, you look 35, well, fuck it, I look 35. And we all were in our early to late teenage years where we were trying to look older than what the fuck we were. And then as we get older, we want to look younger. It is what it is. But the fact that I don't look my age is a testament to, you know, what it is that I do. And, you know, all this, you know, good melanin right here. And I got lights on me, so I am still kind of sweating and whatnot. But... <clears throat> there's that and Toya decides to use this platform rather than to make it about her solely she wants an apology from Lisa Nicole and it's just like you like when they call her tacky tacky Toya she is that fucking tacky okay so I so I have a note that says Le heavy <clears throat> heavy Lisa dance got it okay so you have Lisa Nicole dancing Heavy, I forget exactly what she said, but she threw some shade at Lisa pretty much saying that I guess her not having rhythm and not knowing how to dance is part of the reason that Darren did what the fuck he did. Of course, one of those where even though I will look like I want some real shit, <clears throat> Andy don't need to host this reunion. Andy need to get an outsourced person and let them be shady enough and unbiased enough to sit here and just let the shit go. I'm just saying. And the everything pretty much ends with Simone and Mariah talking. And it's one of those where they're just kind of talking about relations and whatnot. Mariah whole thing is the reason that she and Simone fell out is because Simone took quads out, which we all can clearly see that she did. But Simone whole thing is I have apologized. So it's almost like we're not getting anywhere. But at the same exact time, <clears throat> apologies they only do so much. And if you're not actively putting forth the effort to mend relationships, it is what it is. And if you don't care about men in a relationship, then you just don't fucking care. But again, Quad's name came up. And from the contest, other names came up. So you have Toya. Now, again, this is them just having their own moment. So Toya sees it. So Toya walks up and she's like, and she, I'm paraphrasing, but like, what's going on? What's, and she continues to say it because what is happening is you have two people having a conversation. She's right here. They're not paying her any fucking mind. They're still talking to each other. And then they finally kind of somewhat bring her in. Me, I would have been that motherfucker where you going to stand the fuck right. Because I'm that dude where, and this is one of the things where it's kind of how I grew up. I don't like people jumping into conversations that I'm in. And I don't like being brought into a conversation that has nothing to do with me. So if I'm talking to a person and somebody is constantly trying to get in, I'm going to leave your ass right the fuck there. And if the other person decides to bring you into the conversation, I'm no longer in the conversation. That's just how the fuck I am. Call me pet. Well, I'm very fucking petty. I ain't no fucking lot. But call me what the fuck you want, but I am a man of principle. <clears throat> so that's one of those where if that would have happened, I would have been done with the conversation. Fuck it being a fucking camera moment. On some real shit, I would have been done. We not been to fucking do this. And at the same exact time, if we're going to have this conversation, they probably should have went outside. But even had they done that, some way, somehow, Toya would have found that, it brought her way into it. And Toya's whole thing is she heard a quiet name. And she said, well, if I'm trying to be messy, I would have said how this whole thing was about quad. So, again, yeah, you being very fucking messy. Quad comes over, <clears throat> and I do like quad. I do. But I believe, this is me, I believe quad put 20 on 10. And pretty much kind of, we had a flashback of, you know, the last season where she kind of gave the dramatics and everything else. And it just is what it is, and it fucking ended there. So, I know I didn't talk about everything. But I think that is enough. That is all that I have for this particular episode. Um, As I've said before, if y'all did not watch a previous video that I did, I am back. But do understand that um, February, March, and May are going to be rough, uh, difficult times. I may not be here. Which either means that A, that I will um, 
pick up where I left off with other things. Meaning when I come back, give you guys back reviews, or we'll just pick up and then just go from there. I still need to work on my um, Black History Moments uh, videos, so I do need to work on that. I actually go and leave uh, next Thursday, because my work is on a Friday. So I will do my best, no promises, to start working on some of that content to have it ready. But again, no promises. So thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you all for all the support. Trust me when I say I mean this wholeheartedly. I love all of you. So um, rate, comment, subscribe, and share. And I will see you on the next video, which um, <clears throat> should be... Um, Real Housewives of Atlanta. If not, I'll probably do uh, tabloids and trending topics with T. The only thing is if I do it, it's probably not going to be on Periscope. It'll probably just be me just kind of doing this right here. So, all right, that's it. Peace.